What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do things a little differently. We're going to build a DIY drum enclosure. We're going to build this thing from start to finish and see what works and what doesn't and experiment along the way. Be sure to watch the full videos. The plans do change around a bit as we discover things as we go. Our plan worked as a great guide for us, but some things don't work out in the real world quite the same way they do on paper. In the end, we ended up with a gorgeous drum enclosure that is super effective in muting our live drum sound. So before we get started, I want to point out a few things. If you're wanting to follow along with the build and make an enclosure with a curved front piece, you want polycarbonate, not acrylic. Lexan is the polycarbonate as plexiglass is to acrylic. These are just name brands. Polycarbonate is bendable and virtually unbreakable. That is why it is also called bulletproof glass. Acrylic or plexiglass is, well not. Because shipping a 10 foot piece of polycarbonate can get expensive, your best bet may be to check with local glass retailers. I called around a few window shops before finding one that could source me a piece in our desired dimensions. I called asking for a quarter inch thick 6 by 10 foot sheet and waited less than a week for them to receive it in their weekly shipments. Alright guys, so today we're starting to build our drum enclosure. Um, all the plans to this will be included in the link below this video. Um, so what we have done already is we have two 4 by 8 sheets of plywood. These are a quarter inch thick. They're going to be the bottom of the bottom of our platform. So these are eight foot wide. We cut these down from 96 inches to 90 inches, um, just because we're trying to keep it as small and tight as possible. Um, so these are 90 inches wide, and we just have two of these lined up right next to each other. Um, so one of these is going to be where the drummer will sit, and this front one will be where the bow will begin for our drum enclosure. So because we have a 10 foot long piece of plexiglass that we're gonna use for the front, um, we have already had, we already have our numbers figured up thanks to this video that I'm going to put a link above right here. They have already done all the math for us. So we're just going to use their plans and kind of build on top of that. I just want to pause right here to say that they do an excellent job of explaining what all these numbers mean. And if you are wanting to build an enclosure with different dimensions, you will find a link to this calculator in their video. It's probably just a good idea to pause this video for real right now and go watch their video. Consider it a prerequisite to this video. So the arc of our circle bows out 33.354 inches. That is not the radius since it's not going to be a perfect semicircle on the edges. There's still going to be a little bit of an angle um, transitioning from our flat sides into the bow. So we're going to put our 33.354 inch mark starting from the very end of our straight piece of plywood. So we're going to measure 33.354 inches from our seam of our first four by eight. So 33.354 inches comes out to right here. This is going to be where the tip of our arc sits, where the edge of our circle hits. We're then going to use our radius of the circle, 47 inches, and measure in from that end point. And that is where we're going to put our screw for our straight edge to then rotate around to create our arc. All right, now that our screw is in, we're going to hook our straight edge there. And I've already measured the length of this. It ends up being just about 47 inches. So I'm going to hold my pencil on the edge here, and that looks like it is lining up perfectly to the, edge, to the corner of our board. I'm just going to hold this on here while I'm putting pressure on the straight edge, we're going to make our arc. So that should hit that end point. And Hunter's going to move some of our stuff out of the way. And right under the corner. <laughs> Just like that, Hunter's impressed. I am impressed. All right, so now we have our arc that our plexiglass is gonna run along. I'm sorry that our polycarbonate is going to run along. Make sure you get Lexan polycarbonate. That is the bendable stuff. Plexiglass is not bendable. So on that we just drew on our piece of plywood is actually going to be the groove that we're going to route for our polycarbonate sheet. Um, I'm going to move our screw forward by 
Half an inch. One inch? Half an inch? We're going to move our screw forward by one inch. Um, and that will create then the arc for us to cut along, just so there's a little bit of a lip in front of our piece of Lexan. So we're now going to do the same process to make a line on which we will cut along. Hey, so just so you know, moving the circle forward one inch does not create a perfect one inch lip all the way around. We would have to make our radius one inch longer. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my friend. He's a little slow. So it's one inch at this very point. That's so true. But on the sides, it is not an inch. I think it's fine. I think just cut along the line. Cut along the line? Mm hmm At this point in the build, Hunter cut along our white cut line, and we begin studding out the base with 2x4s. We don't know if it did anything to help dampen sound transfer through the base to our stage, but we had some insulation laying around that was going to be thrown away, so we filled the empty spaces with it. Once this was done, we began tacking on our 3 quarter inch ply to the top of the finish nailer. We chose a thicker ply for the top since we knew this side would see foot traffic and we wanted to eliminate any bowing. At this point we were eager to see if our arc measurement was correct and held our Lexan in place around the base to check. After some more thought, we decided it may be a good idea to add some more supports on the outer edges of our studs. I drew both arcs again on the second piece of 3 quarter ply and we tacked it on as well as screwed everything down to make sure it was secure. If I were to ever build another enclosure, one thing I would do differently is run a couple of studs all the way from the front to back to offer better support between the two sections in the platform. There were times when we were moving it when we had to be very careful to not just lift up by the front of the platform for fear of the screws ripping out. This is what our finished platform looks like right now. So as well as adding the extra boxes on the ends, We've also added a couple support pieces, 2x4, just on the very ends right there, as well as out here, just to give a little bit extra support. This 3 quarters plywood is actually pretty sturdy, so if there's not a lot of weight being put on those ends, I don't know how necessary it completely is. So there's the other end, and we will be adding a skirt around the end. We will just get in some really thin plywood and bending it around the front of this too cover up those insides. Okay, so what I've done here is I've rigged up a jig to run my router on. Um, you can see if I slide it, it'll go around our deck in a perfect circle. I have set the lengths to be exactly as the arcs that I drew before um, with our straight edge. I just used a scrap piece of plywood for my jig. And what I've done is I've set up a quarter inch straight bit in the router. What that's gonna do is cut out just a little tiny pocket in the wood. I have it set to about a quarter inch deep that our Lexan will then fit into the groove and then slide into around the distance of our arc. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that now. Lock that to prevent it from turning on accidentally. And we can take a look at our groove. So here we're looking at our quarter inch wide by quarter inch deep groove that we have just routed into our top layer of our deck. You can see it does actually go past that seam a little bit. That's because the center of that cut was supposed to start on that corner, which looks like it did. So I wanted to make this just deep enough to be able to um, hold the hold the Lexan um, and not be worried about it slipping out or anything. I didn't want to make it too deep though for us to lose some height because it's only six feet tall. I decided on quarter inch deep so that that takes away only a total of a half inch of our height because we'll be routing the same quarter inch groove on the top panel of our enclosure. So since we lose a total of a half inch due to our groove on the bottom and the top, our six foot high enclosure now becomes 71 and a half inches instead of 72. So I'm going to start making our back wall by cutting the sides that are gonna be 71 and a half inches. Gonna line up our mark and make our cut. 
On our back wall, the studs are going to be made out of uh, one by twos, and that is going to cut down on cost and weight. So as long as it's rigid, it'll be good to go. So we got our back wall studded out and framed out with the one by twos on our pieces of plywood. On a quarter inch piece of plywood, we're about to cut our next two pieces of plywood and put on the other side. Um, I think we're going to put some more insulation in these boxes though before we screw everything down. So we're just holding the back wall on here and we put our kick drum on there for reference as well as the seat and it seems like there's gonna be plenty of room for us to be drumming. We also checked the plexiglass earlier in our groove. It looks like it's gonna end up working out perfect. So here's what it's gonna look like. Wave to the camera, Hunter. Cool. We attached the back of our platform using a combination of L brackets and straight brackets. While this won't immediately feel all that sturdy, it becomes very solid once everything is in place and secured together. Another thing worth pointing out is to leave a quarter inch or so on either side of the back where your Lexan sheets or your recycled drum shield like we used can sit flush with the base. That is also something to note in the next step when setting your vertical studs. Leave just a little space to accommodate your siding of choice onto the platform. In our new space, there's Hunter moving our old drum shield. Um, we are putting our uprights on the base. Attaching it just with some L brackets from Home Depot. And we're going to put two more on here. And we will continue our build. It was at this point that we realized if we were to stick to our original plan, there would be a 2x4 stud blocking any drums from being moved in or out. We decided to change up our door system and aim for making an accordion style door that would allow the entire side to open up in order to move drums in and out as needed. Have our exoskeleton complete. Hunter's cleaning up some of the excess stuff. Um, we're leaving the beam on this side off because we think it'll be easier for our door, um, easier to get stuff in and out. So we will keep you updated on that. We're about to scoot it out to be able to put the three quarter inch plywood on top. And then we can start for the uh, front. And here comes the paint. Painting is pretty self-explanatory, but the objective here was to only cover the parts that would be visible. We knew we were going to carpet the platform, but also knew that specific parts would be exposed, such as the area butting up to the groove, the outer lip, and areas around our 2x4s that might show through. Alright guys, I'm ready to start gluing down our carpet for the drum enclosure. What we have here are some, I think they're either foot and a half, foot and a half, or 2x2 two two foot um, carpet squares. Um, I don't think you have to glue these down, um, but we're going to glue these down just so we don't have the kick drum kind of pushing the carpet. So here we go, we got some leftover carpet glue from the rest of our building that was being carpeted. So what I'm doing is using a trowel it was made for carpeting laying down flooring so you're trying to get that in focus um, just scooping a little bit of glue out of our bucket here putting some down spreading it a little bit and using an edge so we see those lines and I'm sure I'm not doing this completely 100% correct but I'm not a carpenter or whatever you call the people in the profession. I'm just trying to get the job done. My first piece down, um, just butt it up against the wall and flush on that side. And I'm going to continue laying these squares down and we can see how it looks. We're getting close. This, these carpet squares are kind of difficult to cut. I'm trying to use a box cutter, but I'm having to go in with some like shears too cut it all. Um, maybe your carpet will be easier. So what I'm doing is just coming right up to our groove and cutting it. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to end up putting a trim piece on the front of this uh, this open space down here. We're going to put a trim piece of wood curved around um, with a little bit of a lip and hopefully that will cover any unsightly parts in the carpet. It's all carpeted 
and it is all blacked out. We're trying to move it out so that we can get access to the back sides to put our plexiglass on. There's Hunter, say hi Hunter. Can we get a drill back there? Nope, we gotta move it out more, okay. We are drilling our plexiglass to be our sides. This is our plexi, not our lexan. Our lexan is the front. This is our old drum shield that we are recycling for the sides of our drum enclosure. Um, That's perfect. We are getting these pre-drilled so that we can tack them on to our upright braces. We're putting our foot high pieces because we have a five foot drum shield with the foot extenders. Putting the foot pieces on the bottom so that the tops are just a solid piece all the way. Um, getting these done, Hunter is screwing these in. It's gonna be tight. Just putting some washers. We're in some tight quarters. That's what it looks like from the outside. We put tiny little washers on our screws. Okay. We've got our door on the right side. Um, so it opens kind of like an accordion. We uh, got some hinges. We're able to just drill right through. Drill the holes obviously, and then we use nuts and uh, machine screws to get it on the hinges. Um, we connected our extra one foot pieces using these straight ties, just kind of sandwiched in between there. So this latches and keeps it shut, kind of like a bathroom stall latch. Um, found all the hardware at Home Depot. Okay, so we're going to pause right here in the build to talk about the second and third major changes we had to make on the fly. Because the arch section of the ceiling is mostly supported by the Lexan, that in itself was a bit of a challenge to install. You might be able to figure out a better way or a different order to do this in, but we had to have a couple people support the ceiling while we attached it to the back section of the ceiling using some scrap 2x4s. Once it was secured that way, we were able to move the Lexan into position and begin seating it into the grooves. This was a bit of a nightmare because just as we would get one portion of it seated, another would pop out of place. Here's where we encountered the big curveball. Once it was finally all in place, the edges bowed out and we were unsure if it would start popping out again. We screwed on some temporary support blocks to make sure it stayed seated in the grooves while we figured out how to remedy the situation. What we settled on doing was adding two more 2x4s where the edges bowed, giving Lexan somewhere to anchor to on the edges. This solved our problem completely as it straightened out any flex in the Lexan and kept it from wanting to pop out of the grooves. We added a second 2x4 at a slight angle to go along our groove and then got some screws with washers and just did a ton of them up and down that new 2x4 so that it is no longer bowing out on either side. We made sure to pull our inside film out before we pegged it down so that there's no film stuck in between the 204 and the glass. And now Hunter and I will take that off. Dude, you feel the static electricity? <laughs> oh, my hair. <laughs> You're getting in it. Look how clear it is. I haven't really like, looked outside. Is this how fish feel? Dude, that is gorgeous. You literally can't tell. Oh my gosh. Gosh. That is insane. I'm sure oh my god. If there's lights in here, you'd be able to see your reflection. But that's pretty good. Dude, that is beautiful. Here, I'm gonna bring the camera inside. Alright, act like you're playing drums. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> there's Oh my gosh, dude. It's you guys can't even tell where it yeah, begins maybe. and where it ends. We're going to take our temporary blocks out. I think we're going to try and glue down and caulk it as well. But look how beautiful that is. You get some sweet looking reflections, but other than that. It just looks like two floating half moons. I know. <laughs> when you really start to look Dang, at this it. doesn't do it justice. Got some black caulk that we're about to do on the outside bottom. Oops. 
After caulking the top and bottom on the outside and inside, we added the trim on the bottom edge of our platform and cut a small hole in the back wall to run some XLRs through. As soon as we finished, we devoted a lot of our time to getting the rest of our church worship center set up and lit. All during this build, we had also been DIYing all the stage lights you see along the back wall, which we will cover in another video, which I'll link to once it's available. One last thing I wanted to touch on is our door system. Because of the tight quarters we had to work with, the accordion style worked out really well for us. While this door is still effective at containing the drum sound, it is not airtight and is louder to stand next to as opposed to standing out in front of the enclosure. This is something that could be improved on in the future, but we are more than happy with its performance for right now. Let us know in the comments if you figure out a more effective door for your enclosure. Alright guys, well we hope this video at least gets you excited to do some experimenting and maybe make a drum enclosure of your own. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for future updates and more DIY videos, and check out some of our other videos as well. Leave us a comment below and let us know how your build goes, and if you make any awesome discoveries along the way. Thanks so much for giving us a watch, and we'll see you soon.